to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. And then I'll share with us a few principles that make for unity. Number one, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10. Paul the Apostle was admonishing the church in Corinth. And he said that we speak the same thing. I beseech you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Romans chapter 14 and verse 19. Romans chapter 14 and verse 19. Romans chapter 14 and verse 19. And then we look at Philippians chapter 2 and verse 2. If the media can help us so that we save time very quickly. Just go to Philippians 2 2. I'm not sure you got my scripture. Philippians 2.2. 2. It says, Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, and being of one accord, and of one mind. Fulfill ye my joy, Paul is speaking, that you be like-minded, of the same mind. And then let's look at Acts, the book of Acts chapter 4 and verse 32. Most instructive. This was the early church that they went forward and they advanced today we are recipients and beneficiaries of this state of unity that was initiated during the early church it says and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul neither said any of them that ought that ought of the things which he possessed was his own but they all had all things in common when you read, it tells you that they came together in one accord, meeting every day and praying in unity. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Let me add one more scripture. We'll read from verse 9 to 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, chapter 4. I meant to say Ecclesiastes 4 from verse 9 to 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 9 to 12 let us now listen to the wisdom of the preacher he says two are better than one why because they have a good reward for their labor next verse for if they fall the one will lift up his fellow but woe to him that is alone woe to him that is alone when he fallen for he hath not another to help him up next verse Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? For if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not easily broken. Scriptures that talk about unity. It is important for us to understand that in division, in seditions we will never be able to thrive and to advance as individuals as families and as a people even as a nation as a continent it will take unity now let me say something unity does not mean doing the same thing unity means motivated by the same goal we will never be able to do the same thing but that our motivations can be the same. There must be unity 
among the men and the women of God upon our land, there must be unity among the politicians and those who are in governance. There must be unity among our elder statesmen and veterans. There must be unity even among um, our traditional council and so on and so forth. There must be unity among clans and families. In our unity is our strength. Now, it is easy and very cheap to talk about unity. But I submit to you that unity is hard work. And that unity does not happen arbitrarily. There are principles that if violated will never produce a united people. This is where I plead that you lend me your undivided attention. Because it is not enough to plead the case of unity upon our land. It is important for us to understand the principles that we must keep. I have studied the subject of unity as a leader, as a man of God, as one who has seen the benefit of being united. And I found out that many people talk about unity without talking about the principles that must be kept. Unity is a reaction. Something must be done to equal unity. Just to say we should be united is not enough. There are principles that if violated will continue to spell division. But if honored and kept, then we have signed the path for unity. Please follow carefully as I show you by scripture. Three or four keys that I have found from scripture that will be responsible for the unity of individuals, of families, of territories, and even of our land. Are you ready? Number one, the first key that is responsible for unity in our land and in our lives is love. There can never be unity until there is love. In John chapter 13 and verse 35, John chapter 13 and verse 35, Jesus himself was speaking and he began to charge us on the cause of love. And here's what he said. By this shall all men, how many men? All men, know that ye are my disciples. Not when you preach well. Not when you heal the sick. Not when you acquire degrees. Not when you rise to the zenith of your profession. By this singular act shall all men know that you are my disciples. It says, if ye have love to one another. I have studied a bit about love. And God bless my parents for giving me the name that means the way to love. What a powerful name. I appreciate and I honor that name every day. The more I transcend, the more I grow in leadership, I appreciate the power of that name. Hallelujah. Love. I have found out that true love does not have a reason. The moment you have a reason for loving, it is not true love. Genuine love does not have a reason. In fact, having read books by men of God, philosophers, and having listened to intellectuals and studied their materials and dissertations around and across the subject of love, I came to a conclusion that I would need to formulate a definition of love for me. Here is my definition of love, the absence of self. That for me has proven to be the most potent scripture-based definition of love. And this I drew from the very sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The real definition of love is the absence of self. That means you can measure how much the love of Jesus and how much love is at work in you to the degree to which self is absent. And the moment there is self, you can literally use the index of self to measure how much love you have. When it becomes about me, when it becomes about myself, what is in it for me? What will I gain? What name will I make? There is no love in it. 
genuine love does not see it as a thing of embarrassment to sacrifice self for the larger good of others. The first key to unity, therefore, is that we must embrace this definition of love. There is only so much I can do if it will benefit me alone. Do you know, psychologists tell us that there are six indices that measure fulfillment. And one of them is contribution. The degree to which your life is adding value to people will bring you fulfillment as a person. Everything God gave man only finds joy when it serves a cause larger than itself. We farm here where a people who are skilled in farming. I want you to please help me answer this question. How many of you have seen a maize plant eating itself? How many of you have seen an orange tree eating its fruit? How many of you have seen any plant at all? When you go to the farm and plant, when it grows, the joy of that plant is to see that it is able to make its contribution. Love. Look at the labor that the mango tree, the orange tree, the purple tree goes through. There are trees that will spend years. We have trees that are decades old upon our land. And year after year, they continue to produce. Some of them 30 years, some of them 50 years, and none of them have tasted of their fruit themselves. And yet they are content that we continue to take from them. Love is the absence of self. The moment it becomes about me, apostle, about me, then we never will be able to truly walk in love. We must learn to look beyond ourselves and look beyond the momentary and the temporary comfort. We must be guided by number one, the fear of the Lord. Two, conscience. Three, a sense of posterity. Great leaders are guided by these three principal convictions. The fear of the Lord, conscience, and then a sense of posterity. The first key to promoting unity in the Tarok land is to promote love. And it is everyone's business. I must be able to love beyond the walls of partisan divides, beyond the walls of religion, beyond all kinds of prejudices. It is important for us to embrace love. Everybody please shout love. One more time say love. Number two very quickly. Now this is very, very important. The second key that is responsible for unity across any life, any family, any institution, and largely our land, is mutual honor. Please write it down and listen very carefully. Mutual honor. This has been neglected. Nations have gone to war because of the absence of mutual honor. Families have gone to war because of the absence of mutual honor. What is honor? Let me define honor. Honor is the discerning, the celebrating, and if need be, the rewarding of an individual as touching their difference, as touching their sacrifices, and as touching their proficiency. I will come again. That honor is the discerning. Honor is the celebrating and honor is the rewarding of men, systems, institutions for their difference, for their contribution. It is difficult, very, very difficult to find this unity in an environment where all the parties involved make it as a covenant to honor the sacrifices of one another. Now, please look up. Let me say this. This is a plague in Africa. Respectfully speaking, this is a plague in Nigeria. We downplay the sacrifices of many. You cannot downplay the sacrifice of another, the contribution of another, and expect unity. No. When I came into this land, I was 
I was so greatly honored and appreciated and I was humbled by the honor I received from fathers, from great people within this land. And it will only be wise for me to reciprocate that honor. The moment you are shown honor, you must find a way of reciprocating it. Reciprocating it. Honor can never be complete being one-sided. Parents, honor your children. Children, honor parents. Leaders, honor subjects. Subjects, honor leaders. Intellectuals, honor those you think are illiterate. And those who are illiterate, honor those who have paid the price to gain knowledge. Listen, we must be discerning over the sacrifices of many. Yesterday when I came and I sat there, I saw this great man, Dr. Panam, and as he was ministering, I was looking at him. And many people, I know that we know as a state, the great contribution that this man has made to the worship ministry, here on the plateau, and even in this nation, and across. The question is, do you recognize and discern it enough to honor it? There are ministers of the gospel within this land that have been dishonored. There are veterans across different divides in this land that have been dishonored. Listen to me. If we want to see honor, we must, we must be able to, we want to see unity, we must make our honor mutual. That if you honor me as a man of God, then I must honor you as your son and I must honor you as my parents too. That even though I am a man of God, I am still a son of the soil and I must be able to let the world know that we are not, we are not orphans and we are not bastards. And so I must show that honor. Is that true? No matter what we become, no matter where God takes us, it is important for us to know that when honor is mutual, then you have created the bridge for unity. As a leader, I am very vocal to honor my people. You know, um, as a ministry, we're on break now. I decided to give my people break because it's usually a very tasking year for us as a ministry. And I just decided to give them a break so they go and spend time with their children, their families, as we prepare for a, a very busy year coming. And I intended to come for this crusade not to bother them. That's why we just set up. We said we'll come here and meet whatever team we can find here and make do with what, whatever it is that we find here. Only for me to arrive this land and I saw my people, they refused to go home. By themselves they came. I was looking at them and I was almost saying, what in the world are you doing here? Honor. Oh, now they have come here because they honor me as their man of God and they, they constrain their time to be resting. They now sacrifice their time to be here. I will be a stupid man of God if I stand and I brag and I say, that's right, you, are, I, you can see. No, I must reciprocate that honor. Even though they are my people and they honor me, I must also tell them thank you for that sacrifice. When honor becomes mutual, then there must be unity. Are we learning? A dear precious friend and brother, I was flattered when I saw him. He passed us the House on the Rock Church in Jos, Reverend Akila and his dear wife. And I only got word that he was on his way coming to this place. He's not a Tarok man. And yet on hearing that there was a crusade here, an apostle was in his place here, he left everything and came with his wife. And he's been here since yesterday and he's here seated. Now that is honor. And I must be able to reciprocate that honor to him and tell him thank you. And this is what I'm saying now. Thank you, sir. You and your dear wife for that sacrifice and that discernment. There are many, many people here who have laid down their personal comfort and everything to do. My wonderful instrumentalists here, some of them flew down from Lagos 
I, I told them to go and rest. I mean, they had gone for the year. Only for me to find out that they were on their way coming here. And I said, my God, what are, what are you people doing? And you drive them and send them back, they will not go. They will stay till the end of this crusade. Never take people for granted when they are loyal to you and they love you sincerely. Men of God, hear this. Go back to your church on Sunday and before you preach, tell your members thank you. Don't say I'm a man of God. If you like, leave my church. You talk like that, your church will be empty. Tell them thank you. We must be unashamed to communicate the contribution of men. In this place, my face is the face that you see preaching but there are people setting up this sound there are security people up and down some of these people have labored day and night when we are sleeping they are awake to ensure that we are safe not just the facility even my own personal security you see them running up and down some of these people are people at the highest level in the army they shouldn't be doing what they are doing but for the sake of Jesus and for the honor they have for me even though high-ranking people in the military they decided to submit themselves to run around as though they just got into the army that is honor I must tell them thank you is someone learning now you are going to look at the person by your left and right and tell him thank you for the gift of you in my life whether you know him or not are you ready Say it in Tarok, say it in Hausa, say it in whatever language. One, two, go. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. If it's your wife, tell her thank you. Don't say I've married you, I paid your dowry. Say thank you. Go ahead. We are not stopping. Say thank you. Say thank you to another person. And now together, let's say thank you, Jesus. To honor the one who has so honored us in this crusade. naira give him 100 naira because he's doing more than what i'm doing are we learning tonight children go back home this night not tomorrow and go and meet your father and say baba and Dengchi. he will say for what tell him i return from a crusade with a new orientation for the tarot nation that in gratitude and honor lies our unity Husbands, honor your wives. Don't say, I married you. Cook for me. I paid your dowry in the presence of your parents. Mm -mm. Wives, say thank you to your husbands. When God gives you a responsible man who is not an armed robber, say thank you. Parents, tell your children thank you. When they bring a good result, don't look at them and say, what do you think I paid your school fees for? Tell them I'm proud of you. God bless you and thank you. You hardly criticize anybody you honor. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. I honor you. Now you use that and you will see how many doors will be open. There are some of you seated here. Some of our great fathers and great veterans have helped you. They've done things because of them you went to school. Because of them you got married. Because of them you got a job. You have never found a need to go back and honor them. An entitlement mentality. After all, he's my uncle. Go back this night or tomorrow. Find a gift and go and tell them, Uncle, I've sinned against you. Ten years ago you sent me to the university. Now I am a doctor or professor and I have not come to tell you thank you. I'm going down my knees to say now I have learned my lesson. Yafemi, I am sorry. Let me tell you the reason why many blessed people find it hard to support people. Because of ingratitude and dishonor. If I give you 10 naira and you do not appreciate it and come back to me, I will send you away. Can I tell you this? When you practice gratitude and honor, you create the bridge for assistance again the next time. In fact, in the presence of honor, you don't need to make a request again. Your honor itself will open you up to another door. Please do not trivialize anyone. 
any day and anywhere you go and whether it is the young the old the person you despise today may be the person to feed you tomorrow honor all men do not despise our kings do not despise the politicians do not despise the fathers do not despise the young people I know some of them may not be behaving well some of them may be behaving stubborn in as much as we desire them to improve we must let them know that we honor them number three what is the third key that sponsors unity the third key is called forbearance hmm. forbearance Forbearance is more than forgiveness. Please look up. For as long as you are human, from the start of your life until the end of your days, somebody must offend you and you must offend someone. No matter how anointed, no matter how holy, no matter how careful, somebody must offend you and you must offend someone. All men are men. The best and the greatest of us, we are still men. When you have that at the back of your mind, it becomes the sponsor for forgiveness and for forbearance. I will tell you the difference shortly. When Jesus was leading us to pray, here is what he said. He said, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive theirs, those that trespass against us. For as long as you are living in the midst of people, you will find yourself offending someone. And someone will find themselves offending you, especially if you are a leader. Ask every leader here under the sound of my voice. 24 hours is too long until someone offends you. Whether as a preacher, whether as a politician, whether as a royal father, whether as an elder statesman, whether as a mother, a father, Spouses will offend themselves. Parents and children, family members, business people, politicians, royal fathers, all men. There is nobody here under the sound of my voice who has not offended someone in his life. And there is nobody under the sound of my voice who has not been offended. Forgiveness is very powerful. Forgiveness is the highest form of giving. You can give cars. You can give houses. But forgiveness is a kind of giving. It is a painful kind of giving. That's why it means a lot to the Lord. When you forgive, you have shown the excellency of your wisdom and the excellency of your maturity. Now let me define forgiveness forbearance and contrast them very quickly forgiveness is the fortitude and the strength the emotional strength to be able to let go and to provide pardon over someone who has offended you it takes strength emotional strength it takes maturity it takes wisdom it takes thoughtfulness to forgive but now let me tell you about forbearance this is the harder part. Forbearance is not just forgiving. Forbearance means creating a system of accommodation for that weakness because it will happen again and again and again. Hallelujah. I remember a man who told me that he had a problem with his wife and I said, why? He said, the woman talks too much. And so when I sat down with them, I said, madam, here's what your husband is saying. What he's saying? What do we do about this now? And the woman knelt down and said, I'm sorry. And the man said, I forgive you. I said, stop. You are making a mistake. You don't need to forgive her. She will talk again. What you need is forbearance. Forbearance means create a permanent system of accommodating that weakness. There are many people you don't need to forgive. You need to create forbearance. Is someone learning this tonight? Forgiveness can be as a result of a mistake that happened once. 
forbearance is creating a permanent system of accommodation a talkative will always be a talkative a quiet person will always be a woman will always be say amen a man will always be a child will always be a father will always be an elder will always be children do not expect elders to be children they are old they have an advantage of wisdom elders do not expect children to be elders they are children give them time to grow allow life to teach them the lessons it taught you so that they will grow forbearance a politician will always be forbearance a man of god will always be an academician will always be are we learning we must learn to forbear more than forgive forgiveness is important but we must learn to forbear there are people there is nothing you can do about they are just the way they are if that person is your husband forbear your wife forbear your son forbear do you know that elijah was a temperous man have you read your bible do you know that elijah was a temperous man how do you think Elisha followed Elijah until he received his mantle? Don't blame the sons of the prophet for being angry. Their leader was a hard man and they said, go to heaven, go wherever you are going and give us peace. But Elisha said, I will follow. Elisha, you are stupid. Yes, sir, I'm still following. I know what I'm looking for. And at the end of it, can I tell you, some of the most discomforting people in your life are the ones that carry the graces you need. You must learn to endure. Mama may be shouting at you every time, but she has an anointing. The day she prays for you, she will open up your life. Forbear the shouting and be discerning until you receive the grace. We live in a world where people expect godlike perfection from men. Stop wasting your time. It will not happen. Pastor, what is the meaning of that? He's a man. He's just that he's of God. Now, of course, this is not to endorse lack of growth. We must keep growing. But things can happen. Your Bible says Jesus was hungry. Jesus was hungry. He went to a tree and the tree refused to give him food. You thought he would say, I am Savior. I show love. Tree, I will come back. The Bible says he cursed that tree. Jesus went to the temple and found people buying and selling. You thought he would go as a polite civil citizen and report to the Roman government. He went out as if he was strolling and took a whip and returned back. Your Jesus, the best of any man, is a man. You must learn to forbear. You must learn to forgive. Some of you, when you go back home this night, it's time to call your wife, your husband, your sister, your brother, whoever, and say, I love you. God bless you. The Tarok Nation, here we come, here we go, forward ever, backward never. Are we learning? In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God. Love mutual honor forbearance forbearance do you know as a man of god i don't i don't switch off my phone my phone is always on on silent i respond to an average of 600 to 800 text messages per day because of people calling from all over the world and sometimes i will read one text and here's what the text says. Apostle, you are a great man. We love you. Thank you for changing us. And I say, God bless you. And just while I'm about to start smiling, I read another text. Apostle, you must be a wicked man. I've been calling you and you are not picking. I used to know you years ago. You are not like that. You have become proud now. 
<laughs> then I read another one. Who do you think you are? You are not God. I'm calling you and you are not picking. I want you to pray for me. There's an emergency. You are not God. Now listen. If I choose to be angry and I call him, I say, do you know who I am? If you are not careful, you will spend the rest of your days typing your text in prison. No. There are times you have to look at those things and understand that the people do not mean evil. They are just communicating their pain how they know. You who is wiser, show it by your maturity. Are we together now? So sometimes I look at it and then a few times I can, when I have the time, I can call and I say, okay, what is the problem? And the same person who was rambling and shouting, ah, sir, you called me. And I said, that's not the issue. So what do I, and he said, look, my life, I don't, and so I said, so why did you say it was an emergency? I just wanted your attention. And I said, let's pray. God bless you. That person you see may later become the greatest promoter of your teachings because of that encounter but it took forbearance are we together now when someone points his hand and insults you and you insult him back you have shown that two of you are the same when someone insults you and you can look at him let me tell you this many times it is better to be kind than to be right kindness is better than correctness you never go wrong being kind there are times you have to choose kindness. Number two, when God gives you an opportunity, listen and learn. I hope everyone is learning. When God gives you an opportunity and grants you access and you can shelve away that access and not use it against anyone so that people can be blessed, you have demonstrated profound spiritual maturity. An example is Jesus. He could have called 10,000 angels. One call from Jesus. And angels would come to the earth that were more than the men. And it was only one angel that used hailstone and killed about 150,000 people in one night. Imagine if he calls 1,000 angels. We're all dead. And yet he was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And he went. Jesus naked he was on his way going and you could imagine the people who were healed from his crusades so you are a fake man where is now the power can't you throw them away and he held and it was love that moved him he was more interested in a bigger cause than he was proving that he was powerful when the mighty do not use their might it is not weakness it is great strength great strength great strength when he hung upon that cross and he was watching the people he created insulting him let him die let his blood be upon us they even released a criminal and took your jesus and my jesus to the cross and when he hung there ladies and gentlemen hear what jesus said and learn from it with the pain of the nails with his body bleeding Here's what he said. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. How could you advocate forgiveness to someone who is not even repentant? Jesus was on that cross. He had the power to say, Father, the moment I die, let everyone who is alive die. who will create men afresh. But he stood there. There are times when you will have every kind of power, but God will prohibit you from using it so that you will create something that can outlive you. He hung upon that cross. You laid aside your majesty, gave up everything for me, suffered at the hands of those you have created. You took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again now today you reign heaven and earth exalted 
I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I can be yours forever and ever. I will love you. You are the only one who died for me, gave your life to set me free. So I lift my voice to you in adoration. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.